Hi, in this video I will be talking about the uh, moving average time series model. Moving average time series model is used uh, to forecast a particular variable. Um, the functional form of a moving average model look like this. You can see on the screen. Um, so yt is the variable of interest. It's a, a linear combination of the uh, residuals or the error term. Uh, it's also known as white noise disturbances. So ut minus 1 uh, is the disturbance term at lag 1 then disturbance term at lag 2 disturbance term up to uh, you know lag q so this is a q qth order uh, you know moving average model okay so this is how the mathematical uh, repre representation look like uh, the order of the uh, the order of the uh, moving average process is determined by the number of lags which are used. The number of lags used here is Q. So this is a MAQ process. MA with order of Q. Q process. How do we get the residuals of different order? We regress YT with YT minus 1 to get uh, residuals and we continue changing the lags and get the, uh, the corresponding uh, residual terms and then use uh, for you know uh, doing the uh, regression of course it is done automatically when you give uh, when you provide uh, your uh, variable uh, residuals will be automatically created uh, inside the uh, algorithm in whichever software you are using the this properties of the uh, ma process or a ma time series model uh, are the followings the expectation of yt is the constant it's a constant mean if you take the mean here or the expectation here you will get only the mu here right because all other terms you have the residuals and the expectation of residuals is always zero since the expectation of residual is zero so all these terms are going to be zero because if you take expectation, you, you will put expectation here, you will put expectation here, here, and so on. So all these terms will be zero. This will also be zero. Up to this one, all the terms are going to be zero. Only here, the expectation of mu is going to be only mu. So expectation of yt, which is nothing but the mean, is a constant mu okay so it's has a constant mean another property of time series process is that the variance of yt is also a constant so variance of yt is also constant we can prove it also and it also has constant uh, auto covariance uh, since all the three conditions of a stationary process are made, hence a moving average process is a stationary process. The representation of this equation uh, can be done in this way as well. Um, it's just a summation of all the residuals and the constant term. So it's a better representation. Well, to understand uh, a MA process, uh, we'll take an example. Uh, we have a MA process here which has got only two lags. It's a MA2 process. MA2. So it's a MA2 process wherein the variable of interest which is YT is a linear combination of a constant term, uh, the residual of first order and the residual of second order. There are two parameters involved here, theta1 and theta2 okay so um, of course the question here is how do we know the order how do you know uh, you know what is the order of MA process or which MA process model are we going to use uh, well I'll, I'll talk about that uh, so this is a MA process what we usually do is that before doing the model 
uh, before uh, you know finalizing that uh, what is the order of a MA process we actually plot the uh, autocorrelation function or ACF and function uh, if, if you have gone through my previous video is nothing but the correlation of the uh, data series or the variable with its own lags okay so the data series that is of interest to us is yt so autocorrelation function is nothing but the correlation of yt with respect to yt minus 1 then yt minus 2 uh, yt will be correlated with yt minus 1 yt minus 2 so you know it is expected that as you decrease the lags the auto uh, the correlation will go down gradually right uh, y2 will be more likely or more correlated with yt uh, t minus 1 than yt minus 2 okay because what has happened now is going to be related with uh, the most recent period than the uh, period which is not very recent okay uh, but what happens is that after a while there won't be any correlation okay and till that point we take the lags beyond that where there is absolutely no correlation uh, it's not going to help us uh, in terms of you know predicting the future predicting the future value so we don't take uh, the lags for which the autocorrelation takes a value of zero because this is a plot which is uh, you know uh, plotted before uh, finalizing what is the order of a MA series uh, this is a plot uh, of ACF autocorrelation function with uh, regard with respect to the as you can see in this graph um, the first one is always one so the autocorrelation function takes the value of one so first because uh, it's a correlation between yt and yt so it's a correlation between the same uh, you know same series so it is always one so we ignore that then with the first lag so yt with yt minus 1 so we have a value of uh, minus 0.5 right so theta 1 is the minus 0.5 because the correlation between yt to yt minus 1 and then uh, the lag 2 so correlation between yt and yt minus 2 so we have a value of 0.2 for lag 3 the autocorrelation function takes a value of 0 for lag 4 it's 0 for uh, all the lags we have autocorrelation function equal to 0 so we consider only till lag 2 okay beyond that it's of no use so only lag 1 and lag 2 are used for predicting the future so sometimes uh, you know you will not have the ACF uh, values e exactly equal to zero. So you need to do a statistical test whether the ACF value is uh, you know close enough to zero or it's significantly different than zero. So sometimes we need to do the uh, the statistical test for that, a, uh, you know, t-test or something like that. So um, so that's how we. Uh, choose the uh, the uh, number of lags to be used in MM process. Uh, just to summarize, uh, an MM process is uh, a process which takes the residuals to predict the future. Uh, how do we know what is the order of the residuals to be taken? Well, we plot the ACA function with respect to the lags and find out that uh, for what order of lag we have a non-zero ACF and uh, we use that order uh, in the uh, uh, you know in, in the uh, model and uh, that's how we uh, predict uh, the coefficients for each of these lags and find out what is the uh, predicted value of the variable so I'll, it will be more clear when I, we do it in a software where most of the things will be automated of course but uh, yes knowing the theory always helps